welcome to Zabaka, a podcast that is dedicated to showcasing the unique Caribbean experience. Welcome to series two. I am Taika Giselle. This podcast is curated especially for Pioneer Productions. Joining me today is the lovely Miss Rina Christian. Hey, Rina. Hi, Taika. <laughs> it's 2021, girl. Yeah. Mm. Whole so there people like to make resolutions when an old year becomes new. Right. I have not made resolutions in a very long time. Same. <laughs> and I I see people like posting, oh my gosh, new year. New me. Oh cool. yes. It's a new year. So like I'm changing everything about myself and it's, I'm new and I'm bright and I'm shiny. Um, and we know that that is a failure. That's bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> and so we're gonna talk about that in this episode, our first episode of series. Our first series two. episode. Hey, I'm excited. I'm excited as well. So what? What happened in 2020? Let me just let me oh discuss gosh. that. <laughs> you wanna go back there? Yeah. You wanna go back? <laughs> if only for the reference, but like, what was 2020? So it, somebody listening to this podcast and in the future mm-hmm. in 2026. What the hell happened in 2020? 2020. 2020 was a whole scenes and a half, mm-hmm. as you would say. Um, COVID happened. Hmm. COVID existed since 2019, but you know, it officially reached Trinidad in 2020. Although I feel a little bit before, but you know, you know, we got to do that. So it was. <laughs> we had carnival. We had carnival oh, in 2020. Yes. It was glorious. It was beautiful. I it was glorious. It. I had a wonderful time. A drama vaccine. You understand? I played Juba for the first time. Mm. I was in a carnival show. It was amazing. It was things. Mm-hmm. Then people had a cough. <laughs> and sneeze. And they said the cough was dry. Mm-hmm. And they can't breathe. Right? Mm-hmm. So COVID hit the country. Um, things had to shut down. Schools shut down. Yeah. You know, um, online learning. Then you had theater spaces shutting down. <sighs> yeah. And then yeah. people had to go home from work, you know? Yeah, we had we had a lockdown and then the lockdown was extended. Yes. So we were we were on lockdown for like what, two and a half months? Yes. In March, I remember we started Zabuka live. Yes. Out of a place. It wasn't even frustration. It was, it was like necessity uh, though. Like was, yes. Let's do this because we need to connect what's going on in our community because also at that time um a few people who were in the theater world and film world passed away. Yes. And we were just like, Oh my gosh, no. We need to connect, we need to see what's happening with our our friends and our family and and yeah, we, we ended up need going to live. talk to figure out our feelings. Like what was happening? And we were yeah. hoping that was the purpose yeah. of that life. And I mean that life just grew <laughs> exponentially. Like we started in March and we had our last episode in December. Yeah. Like we had for the rest of the year. Yep. And we were faithful. We had it every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Every Sunday we had a live. Yep. Which was just insane. Exactly. And then we are so thankful. We had bookers. Listen. Which is people who were faithful to the live and listened every yeah. Sunday. And gave us tremendous feedback and mm-hmm. just gave their opinion. And I, I was I was so happy when people would jump on the live and, and give just, their two cents. Yes. And, yes. It was our whole vibe. And even those who like message after or couldn't look at it live when it was yes. live, but looked at the recorded version and then messaged and said, Oh my gosh, I love this. This was so good. This conversation was so yes. amazing. Um, I mean, and, and we are tooting our own horns because who's going to toot it if not us? Exactly. Um, but we, 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 we had a, a community of people that we surrounded did. us and that, you know, looked forward to that Sunday night when they would tune in. Yeah. And part of that, like every week for so many months, that was like coping. That it was, was therapeutic coping for me because I remember just, just speaking my truth. Mm-hmm. And it was just an outlet, and I felt so relieved. Yeah. And I felt like I was figuring out things about myself and piecing it together because actually, in that time, a lot of change was happening for me. Yeah. And I was. I was changing as an individual and I was coming out of certain things. And so when you say new year, new me, <laughs> I would say that was happening since, you know, since July. July. Yeah, since last year. Right? Since Been July. Like I, um, and I, I hope I'm not just being vague. 
this is the thing i came out of circles and groups i was in mm -hmm. that was no longer serving my growth i wasn't growing as an artist i wasn't growing as an individual yeah and i just i got fed up you know 2020 exposed the real and the fake mm, we got to see the cracks in a lot of the yes. the systems that we were a part of That's and true. you know and i just it was it was a very revealing year it was. not and not just for the people who we were around but for us as well too yes. it revealed a lot of things about um, bad habits that we may have had, yes. <laughs> including people. Ah, including people. How you know food can be a crutch, or how um, how sex can be a crutch, or how you know just like online situationships. Because <laughs> you know I had a few of those. Listen, we need to do an episode specifically to just review those and yes. just be like. Mm, Nah, these are the red flags. Look for these. For me, 2020, I had to really face myself and, you know, understand the things I'm a part of were no longer serving me. I, I got to a place where I was just fed up. Mm -hmm. I was fed up. I was fed up in being in situations where I had to compromise myself. I would professional groups when i say professional groups i mean theater groups yeah you know um i'm not being fed you know i'm not growing i'm not i i just got to a place where it's i'm not being supported mm -hmm. by the people that should support me if i'm looking to you as a teacher or a mentor yeah so i had to exit that group friendships you know i had to leave some friendships behind because i realized that this person i'm not getting what i need from this mm -hmm. my love language is you know i need to be affirmed i need to know what's happening and then if you're not communicating with me then what will really happen in? what do you have to do right and i felt like it was one-sided at one point and i felt like when i tried to express myself i really wasn't being heard yeah so i just had to give it a break I give social media a break. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> like, I, I had to, you know, understand that. Well, I had to, I had to understand, I had to, I had to confess mm -hmm. that um, just posting stuff on Instagram was to basically attract attention. Mm -hmm. I used to post videos in my bra. Mm -hmm. So more online people could be like, mm, my message is a night. Mm -hmm. You know? I had to I had to be honest about that, you know, and I said, Okay, you know what? I, I wasted my time here. So I need to stop posting. I need to have boundaries when it comes to this. And then I say, you know what? New Year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me just take a break from this thing. And guess what? I, I don't miss it. Now the first few days I pick up my phone. Because it's, it's, it's a muscle memory thing. You just pick mm -hmm. up your phone, yep. right? Yep, yep, yep. But I'm picking up my phone to do what? To yeah. watch something that is no longer there because the apps are disabled. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so for me, like, because I did do a cleanse. Mm -hmm. I wasn't online um, for a year. And then I would only come online to delete the content that I had on the internet. And when I say right. content, I mean like regular pictures, not not really not gonna go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so like I had four thousand and something pictures on Instagram mm -hmm. and I would delete them in batches. So I would delete sixty at a time. Um, archive ones that I really liked and I that I didn't have saved on my phone or maybe just screenshot it and delete it off right. of off of Instagram. And I wasn't on Facebook. So much so that people were like, you so what's going on with you? Everything okay? You all right? Mm -hmm. And it really put things in, into perspective for me because I wasn't online. Now, I use Instagram during COVID lockdown as one of my coping mechanisms. Not just to do Desiree Live, but to share funny memes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I listen, I was all of my stories sharing, talking that but I also used that free time to do research, to mm -hmm. write, yeah. to finish writing a script that you know you guys ended up performing in November. Like yes. I had things happening. So for me it was 
yes, not being online and not being on Facebook and not using Instagram as much. But when I did use it, I was using it for a specific purpose. Okay. You know? And also, the fact that I wasn't really on, it drives home the point for me as well to like, I had to not judge people for not reaching out. Okay. Because I wasn't reaching out either. Because I wasn't in a space to reach out. Right. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to... I'm not going to be like, hmm, well, you're not my real friend because you should have messaged me. Mm-hmm. But it's like you didn't message either though. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's very different than like a friend not checking up on you just regular not not because of the the covid or whatever but that's a that's a whole other different situation but it was just like everybody's going through a rough time and we all trying to just make it yes. through this this patch just just ease off and do have any expectations of of people who might be having a tough time and hope that nobody no expectations are you either because <laughs> yeah don't like i just i don't want to message you like i if i message six people every day mm-hmm. and it would be the same people that's plenty yeah that's who you taps my cousin <laughs> you yeah. know so and also that also that was at, like one of the things that i had to work on during that time to like manage my expectations which is a big thing for me because I am the queen of expectations. Is that because your love language is? My love language has changed. I'm, I'm and okay. we'll, we'll talk about this as we go through this series. Like, my love language used to be acts of service. Okay. And now I have a higher percentage in, um, not acts of service, but, oh my gosh, not words of affirmation. Not physical quality touch. Time. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> physical touch is still zero, still zero percent. Right, but quality time is now up top. Okay. Then acts of service, then words of affirmation, then receiving gifts, then physical touch. So wait, so your love language is now quality time. Mm-hmm. Is it because you've been deprived of quality time? I think it is. 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 I do think that that's why it's adjusted or changed or shifted or whatever. Okay. Like I have like a few more percentage in quality time than I do in acts of service. So is it that this year you're gonna? Oh God, we're gonna talk about you and you me. But is it that twenty twenty one for you looks like having quality time with people that you hold near and dear? I don't know. I don't know if it's like that. Or is it <laughs> We gotta just play this by air. I think I wanna play by air. Okay. I think I wanna play by air because I still I still do feel like, you know, when somebody thinks about about me and does something or contributes to my growth, my elevation, like that's like yes, yes, boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, um, talking about playing by air. I'm playing twenty twenty one by air. As am I, like I have bought a planner. Okay. No, like literally let me show you my bag. <laughs> So I literally have this notebook, right? Oh my gosh. This notebook. Brand new. Brand new notebook. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, I'm not going to buy a planner because a planner only have one page a day. And yes. I'm not a one page a day girl. Mm-hmm. I have two, three page a day. Yes. And I had to compartmentalize, which is what I'm learning to do, which I had to learn during the COVID. I'm learning now. And it's, whew. New right. year. New me? Question mark. <laughs> um... So what I did, I have like little scrapbooking and thing, thing, thing. Oh my gosh, that is so But cute. I draw a calendar. Nice. Because I don't want the people in them calendars to tell me what to do, whatever. And I would just mm. fill in the air with what I'm doing for the day or whatever. And then I have my brain dump, which is everything I feel like I need to accomplish in the, in the year, for the month nice. or whatever, whatever. And listen to me, if I don't take it off, I'm not feeling bad or guilty about it because it's about... um. For me, not getting too overwhelmed with a list. Okay. Now, I have to have a list to be organized because if I don't yes. have a list, I, if, in my history, mm-hmm. <laughs> my history is if I don't have a list, it wouldn't get done because I'm not actively seeing it and I haven't written it down. Right. That's how shit does happen for me. I said, I write yes. it down. Yes. So, but also knowing that, okay, if I planned to do 10 things today and I only got six done, 
I'm not going to harp on the fact that I didn't get the last four done. Okay. I'm just going to migrate them to the next day. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on not feeling guilty about not completing the 10 things. Because the six is what I could manage. Right. And the six for that day. So, and, and honestly, even if I have 10 things on that list and I only do one, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be like, okay, you did, you did one of the things today. Because some progress is better than, than no none. progress. But also, Reens, what, what I do feel as well too is like, even if I do none of the things on the list mm -hmm. that's fine okay because and it's not uh, me feeding into my procrastination because i've i've examined this like maybe i just like be trying to be lazy and procrastinate for no fucking reason but like sometimes we just need to pause and rest and catch yourself yeah. and sometimes if something affects you and you don't know that it has affected you and it causes you to shut all the way down sis you need to sit drink some tea and reset yes. and if that reset takes you a day where you need to go and take a walk and then and you literally can't do paperwork or divide a script or talk to a friend or like if you literally haven't done anything on that list mm -hmm. but you've done things for your mental health just get that done yes get that done that is important because we are we've been bred to we always have to be making something, doing something, doing something. And we were forced to stop and pause and just like reevaluate everything. Yes. Everything. Because we were in our rat race before 2020. Mm -hmm. And yep. I felt like the, the past, I was just unconscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just, no, that's how I felt. And I, and I always tell you, Tycho, what is so scary to me i do not want to be an old person and i have things that i haven't dealt with yeah things from my childhood things parental relationships relationships with my siblings because these things affect who you are as a person yeah and they okay. affect the, the choices that you make mm -hmm. i want to work my stuff out yeah so i can make better choices and have a better quality of life yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah so 2020 i really had to deal with myself because mm -hmm. i had no work i had to work from home yeah and then it really made me look at okay is this job serving me mm -hmm. is this job serving my purpose is this job mm -hmm. serving my growth yeah am i being appreciated because appreciation is something that's very important to me mm -hmm. and i needed to confess that yeah. Right? So I worked from home and then I had all these questions about what I was doing. And my path, you know, in theatre is that I'm gonna stay and act with these groups mm -hmm. or but then I realized, well, wait, these people wait, they're not for my growth. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. They can do what they are doing and I could come out of that. Yeah. And then I could say, okay, what do you really want to do? You want to do a children's show? Okay. But you had ideas about doing this before. But it was just so overdone. Mm -hmm. And it's what is expected. I was like, you know what? No. If I'm doing this children's show, I need to do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. And what I feel is right in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's not about views. It's not about making money. Yeah. It's doing it because it's a vision that I have. And I want to bring it to life. Definitely. And I want to share it with children. That's what it is. So 2020, having that isolation, it really helped me to look at my life and said, what do you really want? And I had to come to a place title, which was very scary where I had to sit and say, I do not know what I want. Mm -hmm. And that was like, oh my God, because I felt like a fish out of water. I felt like, okay, so I don't know what I want. What direction do I go? What do I do with my life? Yeah. Because you have a limited number of days. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who passed in 2020, who was 29 years old. So, what, so it, it, it became, Okay, what am I going to do with my time here? Yeah. 
I do not know what I really want to do. So what I had to do, tap into my spiritual side, tap into my spirit man. Make it count. Exactly, right? And I had to ask for direction. I really had to ask for direction. And now I did not stop because I still am doing things and pursuing things, but I got quiet and I'm in a space where I'm listening to mm -hmm. something that's bigger than myself. And I'm asking, what should I do with this life? Mm -hmm. What would you have me to do? What is my purpose? And then the shift is no longer about me. I put on Instagram with my bra <laughs> and talking to this boy. Mm -hmm. And you know, it switched from vanity to Service. what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Surrender, Ilan Evansan. It doesn't look like this. It looks like this. Mm. And I wish this was a tape to show because so, not looking <laughs> down any ground, <laughs> not looking down any ground. Like you don't know, but your head is up to the heavens. Yes, and you, you know, because you could see. Yes. If your head up. You can see, you can look around, you can move your head, but if your head down, what you're watching, you're watching, you're growing, you can't watch, you can't see where you're going. Exactly. And, Taika, things have happened I didn't think was going to happen. Mm -hmm. The people that came out of my life, I didn't think was ever going to come out of my life because I was so committed yeah. to, these, to this friend. But, okay, does it think me, like, that have like so much isn't there a fear attached to that like fuck i'm gonna have to start fresh <laughs> with, a big fear. with with somebody or with anybody or but just like can i say what something that i did in that friendship that i i i need to confess mm -hmm. i didn't listen mm, okay i didn't listen so when comments were made mm -hmm. It hurt my feelings, but I was just like, that's the personality, mm -hmm. you know? I'm just going to push that aside. Right. I didn't listen that what I value this as is maybe not what that person valued it in the same, or, or held it to the same standard. You understand what I'm saying? So do you feel like you gave that person allowances simply because of the longevity of the friendship? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And I saw a meme on Instagram last year. You know, we have to stop holding on to friendships just because we know the people in middle school. Mm. And it's true, we grow differently. Yeah. And that friendship, I still have love, unconditional love for that yeah. person. It's just I'm in a space in my life where I am growing differently. Yeah. All right. And, and who knows, maybe at some point we're going to reconnect. Yeah. Um, even with a situation with a, a guy I had, you know, um, two years ago, yeah. I told you yeah. I called that person early twenty. Which I was so shocked about. That was my so scared. Yes. But of course, it was. was it was about that. I had a dream, and I was just like, you know what? Because you know, people start showing up in their dreams because they're thinking about them. Mm. I was like, you know what? It's not going to control me. Yeah. There's not going to be somebody out there that's going to be like, I don't talk to this person. I don't whatever. No, no. I called them and I was just like, hey, just know that I have no hard feelings. If we box up in town, it's like, hey, how are you going? Keep it moving. But just know, no negativity on this side. Yeah. I felt so free. And I am trying to be like that with my sister. I have a sister I don't speak to. Mm -hmm. Right? And I cannot want to have relationships outside of my family if I am not having healthy relationships within my family. Yeah. And Dwight gave a beautiful word when we saw him last year. It's called intentional, which means on purpose. Yep. So I am very intentional about having healthy relationships with my parents. I'm blessed to still have my parents yeah. in terms of they're in the old age. I am intentional about having healthy relationships with my sisters. It doesn't mean we lie men and take us good or yeah. whatever, whatever but i show respect and you give me respect yeah. at the very least there's a there's a minimum of of cordiality that that yes. happens that you know we have 
say hi and there's no ill will and there's no bad blood but not at the expense of me and my happiness of course not right because what i was expressing to my father and listen to anybody listen to this who have parents like this who do not speak to you <laughs> when i say don't speak to you you exist in, in a, a space household and you just don't talk about serious shit yeah it's just you don't have the hard conversations because your parents watching tv mm-hmm. they read the newspaper and you in mm-hmm. your room and yeah, then yeah, yeah. You going through these things and you're not having those conversations. You have a storm brewing inside you and pops watching TV. Exactly. Like you know how much heartbreaks I had mm-hmm. in that house. And, and nobody knew. Nobody knew. Yeah. That's crazy. So we legit suffering in silence. That's what it is. I'm, I'm not doing that. And so. Like why? And my motto we is too, tell the truth, shame the devil. So hey. Right? So, and the devil is not the literal devil. Yeah, the devil yeah. is anything negative that is killing me. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, I had a conversation with my father and I said, Listen, I have a serious issue where I feel like I am I'm being taken advantage of. And this is translating. This is coming out of the home and translating into how people treat me in the world. Mm-hmm. Because I realized, because... I come across as a nice person. People mm. feel that they can make tea in here. comments I don't tea in, here. in front of me and say what they want and, you know, being taken for granted. Mm-hmm. And I say, you know what? I can't deal with these people outside here and not deal with what's in my house. Yeah. And I expressed to my father, I said, listen, I feel like I'm taken for granted in terms of things happen and where... An apology is necessary, yeah. and I don't get that apology. And I said, people do not tell me sorry in this house, and guess what? People don't tell me sorry in the world. Yeah. All right? And I deserve that. So I told him that, and I said, this is how I feel. I bust a cry. When I cry, I feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest it to a anyone good, listening. A good cry. Have a good cry. Cries are, it cleanses your soul. Yeah, they good. And I express myself and I express my fears and I express, I told them, I was just like, you know, um, I didn't finish my degree mm-hmm. and I am pursuing education, but I feel like, you know, you're not proud of me because you don't have something to be proud of. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I, I am. And he asked me if, is it that I'm running out of time in terms of I am afraid that he dies. Mm. And I said, yes. Wow. You know? So and I said, let's go. I deep. You know, and I encourage people to go there. Mm. Go there. Say the things that their lives. So just say the things. And not only to parents, to anybody, just say the things. Yeah. And I said, yes. Because I wanted to feel proud of me. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, is it because you feel that you don't have enough time? And I said, yes. Right? So he knows that now. Um, yeah, he knows that I'm scared about what's going to happen when they die in terms of the ownership of the house. Mm-hmm. And he definitely knows how I feel about that. <laughs> you know? And um, he said that he's going to try to, you know, have the conversation with my sister so we can have a resolution. That's going to be a difficult conversation, Taika. Mm. I am not looking forward to that. But I know that <laughs> if I get over that, yeah. I can do anything in relationships. Right? And I'm, I'm so proud because I'm standing up for myself. I'm not mm-hmm. being the one to cow. And I told my father, I said, I know you want me to speak first because of my personality. Yeah. But I said, I cannot do that because something was done wrong to me. Yeah. So I need an apology. So you need to get that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just say hello. So yeah, so um be honest in your relationships. Have the conversation. Have the conversations you need to have. Let people know where you stand. Yeah. I mean don't self sacrifice. It's 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 horrible. So do you feel like you've had to because I know I had to had those tough conversations with yourself before you even have them of with course. somebody else because you have to be honest with you before you're out here in these streets demanding Listen, honesty from other people this started right with being mistreated i was in a group situation we were liming 
and I realized these people were just being disrespectful towards me. Mm -hmm. And when I say disrespectful, they were just saying things and these people not have no respect. Yeah, they were. And they then were I realized, Rena, there's snide. something that you are putting out there mm -hmm. that is telling people that they could speak to you how they want to speak to you. Mm. You mean like. And they could get away with it. Okay. So it started from there, and then I realized, you know what, Rena? You need to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people people think that you are apathetic, like you don't give a shit? Yes. Mm -hmm. And like, like almost like I you don't. have a tough exper exterior. So it's just like, okay, cool, well, whatever, as well. For Rena, is happy, go lucky, and she's fun, and she's a really business, and I was like, eh. Yeah, I I don't to some extent, but. You, there's a line mm -hmm. because I'm still a person. Yeah. So if you, they were about talking different products I was in. No, oh, just, just to give up context to what people are talking about. And I was just like, no, because this is my work. Mm -hmm. You need to have respect for this. Yeah. And then my friend mm -hmm. didn't stand up. Mm. So it was a two in one. You literally got double me though. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Yes, I just, it just clicked. The it beautiful just clicked thing about life, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Mm -hmm. So this situation forced me to look at myself. What if I'm, I'm, I'm giving people too much leeway when it comes to me? I'm not setting enough boundaries. No, I'm not, yes. Because I'm, I'll say this, that even in certain spaces, like, as I always say, monkey know what treat a climb. Mm -hmm. And... I know for a fact and that a monkey does be up at night. <laughs> I know for how a fact. Is the day. And the and the and the what is it called? And the red button button. Yes. The hollow monkeys. Yes. They love and have monkeys. <laughs> Flips the table. Ah, <laughs> uh, throw some drinks. Um. So yeah. So people would they may say something to me, but they wouldn't say it the way they said it to you. Right. If you understand what I'm saying, it would be said in a more professional uh, more um clean cut clear cut kind of vibes as opposed to as dung in the mud as it was said in your presence mm -hmm. because i don't know i think people i don't i mean people i've been told that i'm intimidating yes i don't believe i am because i feel like i'm the most i real chill dog. i real chill yes. uh and, i mean once you get to like know me like we can shoot the shit you know mm -hmm. Do you think that in setting boundaries is going to um, allow you now to um, choose better in terms of the friends that you you have? So like, okay, cool. This is this is a new friend, yeah. and I've set a boundary, and I'm not gonna cross that boundary. And if I see them encroaching on it, I'ma just I'ma let them know what's up. Because at that point, when whoever said whatever. Um, you didn't speak up for you either. Okay. So having had I that didn't. experience, now has that shit changed with you knowing now, what the line is? Before I answer that question, I would say those people felt they were my friends. But mm -hmm. how do people let you the friends? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. This, and this is the next question. Yes. Like, who do you have around you? <laughs> exactly. Who's, who's enabling you to feel like you could treat people like shit? Mm hmm True. So let me answer that question. I hope in future I don't have to choose. I hope I attract. Mm -hmm. And this situation made me real question actually. Mm -hmm. Wait, but if these people are disrespecting me, mm -hmm. is it that they see me disrespecting myself? Am I respecting myself? So I had to question, mm -hmm. am I respecting myself? Am I... But then no, because I don't have boundaries with these people. Mm -hmm. And then... I'm showing that way. It's a free for all. Yeah. So anything no. Anything. So then I need to change me because that's all I can change. Yeah. And I need to respect myself and show the world how to treat me. Yeah. And then I would attract what I really want. Yeah. Which is a relationship that is respectful. That's what I really want. Mm -hmm. And supportive. Yeah. I think support is, is one of those things that, that gets thrown around a lot. Like, oh my gosh, we support you. What does it mean? What does it mean for you, for me, for whoever? You know, sometimes it's just me making a statement. It's just like, that's such, like, it has become a taboo word. It has, come, <laughs> it has become a taboo as a word taboo. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh, we support you. 
but support. what does support look like and it looks different for all of us it does because what support for me might not be support for you you know or, or for or the other people around us and i think that support also ties into to the way that we um we expect love and 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 um yeah like them kind of energies you know what i mean yes so support looks like giving me the space to do what i'm doing mm -hmm. if you have a comment if it's positive i welcome it if it's negative i hope that i can grow from it it yeah. could be a critique yes or some feedback yeah feedback. not a not a criticism but it can be a criticism where i cannot change it yeah you understand what i'm saying right so support looks like giving me the space understanding that it's not about lining and saying saying it's about doing the work mm -hmm. because I have a vision, I have a baby, I have to birth. Yeah. Which is a children's show. Mm -hmm. It's about doing this podcast. It's about doing my projects, giving me the space to do that. I'm not trying to pull me away from that. And also if you're giving feedback, it has to be one way I can grow from it. Yeah. That is what support looks like. And I'm not gonna lie, like I I words are powerful to me. I feed off of words, so if an encouraging word is there, hey, I welcome that shit. Yeah. You understand? And that's what support looks like to me. Vibes. Yes. You know? And make it, if you can make a connection for me, maybe this is an act of service. If you know, you know, Bolo, <laughs> who could come and move a light, oh, make the connection. Or? Make the link. Link the thing. Make the link. Make the link. Make the link. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm a new person mm -hmm. this year. I really don't feel like it. Um, I mean, I have the fortune to be born in December, so I get the opportunity to kind of, as I'm aging, look back and say, okay, look at that, look at that, yeah. Yes. Mm, that's great, okay, great, January now. Um, but I feel, just like you, that work started last year. Yeah. And you've said that 2021 is your year of healing mm -hmm. and your year of like faces and shit. That. <laughs> because 2021 is my year of healing i'm feeling i feel it i feel like it yeah. and i i'm just like i'm like okay cool and i know this that that's that's yes. your that's what your aim is and so my vision of supporting you is if i see something that i think you would benefit from on your healing journey i'm gonna send that shit your way yes. i'm like hey wins look at this like the youtube video yes yes mm -hmm. The child of trauma YouTube video. Oh, fine. The yeah. TED talk. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I looked at it and I was like, I think mm -hmm. I should send this to Rio. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I mm -hmm. just felt guided. Okay, cool. Send. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That is support. Just, no. So, so like, we said that we, we, we're not like over structuring 2021, but like knowing that this year is your year of healing. Um, and it's the you know me continuing my year of, of legacy planning and, and planting yes. roots and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Like the the things that we choose to do and the people that we choose to have around us are to aid in what this year's theme is. Yes. So now that we have and we are in the process of acquiring knowledge, I feel like yo, ain't no way. We're going to have people who bring in bad energy, bad vibes, not supportive in the way that we need, yes. need them to be, or just being negative Nazis. In no way. Because we learned too much shit in, too much. <laughs> in the last nine months. Yes. Though, like, we learned too much shit to be accepting yeah. mediocre. And I'm not trying to just love a mediocre thing. Like, if we get in a situation ship again, I mean... B bitch, you ain't learned. <laughs> You ain't learn. You didn't learn. Listen, lock me up in a tiger. Yeah. 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 Any woman's prison. <laughs> Any whole woman's prison. Woman's that prison. woman having fun. Yes. <laughs> Things. No, but the thing about this is like, like yo, like that, and that's part of like accountability yeah. of like for uh, for yourself as well too. It's like yo, like what's the vibes? Because I will say this. I don't know. Did I? I don't know if I mentioned it to you at the end of twenty nineteen, going into twenty twenty. I was on high. You know, I was just like. You know what? I've been single since 2017. I've right. been celibate. I think I'm gonna, 
I think I'm gonna start a date in 2020 right. after carnival. I feel like you know I'll just get back out there. And 2020 20, 20 was like peeking from behind the, uh, a wall. Mm-hmm. Bitch, Coffee. where? Bitch, where? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, where? You know you ain't ready to be back out in the streets right. dating mm-hmm. anybody. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? You still have shit to work on with yourself. Yeah. And I feel like if I had started dating like in January. I feel like I would have used that person or that individual as a crutch to go through mm. that lockdown period. Listen. And that shit is scary because I've I've been this is now three years that I'm single and celibate and I usually make shitty decisions in year three. Okay. Historically. So but it be we, about breaking patterns. Though. Exactly. So sis ain't gonna be making right. no stupid decisions in year three like she has done in the past. She chose shit in the past. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is three. Oh my gosh, I have not been in a relationship for so long. Da, 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 da. And then, da, 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 but are you missing anything? Pick shit. Am I missing anything? Um, I think. I think I. Hmm. This is a hard question. Am I missing anything? I think I miss. Like you're missing out on anything. Is there any formal happening? No. Because I feel like I'm I'm missing out on nothing. I don't have to 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 date and be in a relationship. No, I don't think I'm missing out on anything. I I do have moments, and I feel like we'll discuss this as the series progresses. Because I have some thoughts. I think next episode we should we should talk about this. We should talk about yeah. loneliness versus yes. being alone. And I do have moments, and these are very fleeting, and they happen once a month. Yes. What's up, ladies? Mm-hmm. Um, of lacking companionship, of feeling like I lack companionship. Mm-hmm. I mean, like a head rubber be nice right now. And a nice hot water bottle that I don't have to hold because the person I'm in a relationship with is like, babe, you 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 want a hot water bottle? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, like those kind of moments. But then I'm like, and but then my mom will bring a hot water bottle for me, and it all goes away. I'm fine, but I won't have my mom forever. So I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I don't have FOMO relationship FOMO at all. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, trying, I'm struggling to find like a moment where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I should, I should have a boyfriend like my friends. Mm. And I also know, and this is part of like the the work that I did in 2020. I know that there are pieces of myself and of of who I am right now that I am not willing to share with anybody, okay. especially a romantic partner. So. I would want to go into a relationship feeling willing to share. Right now, I got all of them get sack salt, yes. <laughs> I don't want to have to share. And that's it. when you're in a relationship, you just share. And that's time, that's energy, that's no. Yes. And I've also recognized some very toxic things about myself as well, too. I know the way word toxic is it's, it's overused. overused but some dangerous is what i should say some dangerous traits and that is when i get into when in, in past when i've gotten into relationships i have let go of my stuff and pushing myself ahead because i'm concentrating on boosting my partner same. and i've not chosen men who've done the same for me Meaning, if I'm pumping you and fueling you and giving you the vibes, there's no reciprocity, historically. And we're changing that shit. I want to change that shit. Yes. And so, I recognized it, which is step number one. Mm-hmm. Naming it, step number two. And then, working on it actively is step number three. Like, how do I actively not do that? And I have to do that with my other relationships as well, too. Not just... Um, intimate partners and intimate relationships like friendships as well too yeah it's kind of like you as well too like i i give a lot and i'm in a space where can i get some love my people can i i I thought about that right and because i have the same problem Mm -hmm. by the way in march is going to be one year i'm going to be celebrating yay 
God. Like, Random applause. I feel like my journey to celibacy wasn't a journey. I felt like nobody wanted to have sex with me. <laughs> we will talk about that in loneliness versus alone. But I felt like that most times. Yeah. Because if I had options of sex, mm-hmm. but then again, I had options of sex. I just didn't pursue it. Yeah. But yeah, that's how I felt. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be one year and I'm just, I'm at peace. I'm at yeah. peace. It wasn't hard. It really wasn't that hard. Um, oh yeah, but time not. One year coming up in March. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Right, so I have the same issue where I, you know, feel like I neglect myself. Mm-hmm. Hear that word? It's very neglect. strong. Neglect myself Oof. and my needs and my growth. And I really focus on building that person. Mm-hmm. And because I'm that kind of person, I'm a nurturing person. Yeah. I attract people that need to be nurtured. Mm. And that are broken. Mm. <laughs> so my yes. hope, and I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna tell you if it works, mm. is I am because this is a year of healing. So this year I'm focusing on healing. Yes, I'm gonna be doing other stuff, but I'm going to be because there's a difference between being interested and committed. Mm-hmm. So I'm still finding, although I'm interested in a number of things, yeah. I'm still asking for what do I need to be committed to that is lending or leading to my purpose. Right. So once I am committed to the work of that thing, I can't deny it and put it away because yeah. it's my life's work. That's true. It's my purpose. It's who, it's not who I am. But it's part of the it's bigger part picture. of the bigger picture service because mm-hmm. who I am is a kind, loving person. Yeah. But what I do, I know is different. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm hoping that my commitments will be so I'll be so involved in my commitments that I cannot forget and neglect myself to to um to deal with your stuff, my partner's stuff. Yeah. But I hope that I attract somebody who has their shit together yeah. and it doesn't mean having money and material things but just knowing their purpose and actively working on their purpose so they could see hey this girl has a purpose i have a purpose we could encourage each other yeah and could be understanding hey you know i need to film this show and take 12 hours i can't be there honey <laughs> Right, so buy yeah. some KFC or whatever you need to do, mm-hmm. and then I understand where that purpose that person has a, a, a purpose, yeah. You know, if I could help and I can move a chair, yes, can't move a chair, or take two Please. phone calls and be a little receptionist for the day, I don't mind, yeah, but it cannot rob me of my purpose, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think, I think you know, we on this path of like building, it's and building. if we're building. On our own, we like to know that the person that we we attract is also building, and yes. so we can simultaneously build. Yes. And as we build, I'll give you some sand, you give me some gravel, sand. I work on my way. I send an electrician your way, yes. and we both because listen, people. I I love love. If it's my purpose, or if it's for me, because I'm also asking the higher power. Give me what is for me. If it's not for me, take it away. Mm. And it's so crazy that I asked him to take away stuff and people left. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a blessing. Listen. Which is a blessing. Partners need to understand their purpose in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you know, a man needs to understand his role is to support and it doesn't mean financial too. It means the well-being is an overall thing. It's it's bringing peace. You know, a woman needs to understand she can't be wrong at all. <laughs> you know, she needs to contribute to bring peace to that relationship. And it's again doing work on yourself first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't expect anybody to be a peace. Come healed, please. Right? And woman, please. I mean, I'm very hard. If you see any red flags, oh gosh. Ooh, you're seeing red tap on it. You're seeing red, and red flags. flags. There are maracas beaches in the red flags. The ones where mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. men too. No, if you see the red flags, men don't. Yeah. You know? And it's the thing, like, you, as you make the maracas reference, no people will see the red flags and still go in the water. Because and then they, they feel like a handle it. And then the red, the, the guys gotta have to come and save you because you're freaking drowning. Because, listen, as somebody who used to swim in the red flags, uh-huh. <laughs> 
I would see her too. Like, I'd be like, you know what? This fella temporary, but he cute. Mm. He will be 15. Mm. He can pick my up. We'll go mm. for a little ice cream. Mm. And I feel like I gotta handle it. Yeah. But then after a while, when they're in too deep and the waves crashing, you realize you're like, yeah, yeah. And, and you're true. trying to get on your back to float and, and you can't. Exactly. You can't. Right? So and people have to come and bring all their resources, all kind of jet ski. Yeah, but then all the people life at risk because exactly. life can't have to come and save you. Exactly. Jesus, right? Just, so listen, no red flags, please. <laughs> peace. What is peace? Peace yeah. is something so valuable. It is, it is. Right? And that is my aim too. Peace mm-hmm. is my aim. So not a new new year, yes. New me, no. No, I feel honestly, I feel like the person um that who we truly are mm-hmm. who we are meant to be that person is inside of us so i feel like i'm not being a, i'm not become i'm becoming mm. okay michelle obama because <laughs> she became <laughs> she, listen i feel listen. like i'm becoming the person i'm meant to be mm-hmm. right and because of you know childhood situations again um you know, I elder sister now. We're close. Shout out to my, my sister. She used to bully me and come that thing when I was small. <laughs> and I just remind she every now and again. <laughs> and say, Mom, this is her all these things. She used to tell me all these things when I was small, but she was dealing with her own stuff. stuff. Mm-hmm. Because she had parental issues. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, gosh, she needs to go to the therapy. You know, a little therapy now it hurts. Deal with your shit. You know? Deal with it. Because when you don't deal with shit, it's give you a headache. Mm-hmm. Right? So, yeah, so I need to understand what I've gone through and heal Mm. and be intentional about Mm. my healing. Mm. So 2021 is being intentional about healing for me so I can be a better person Mm -hmm. and I can have better relationships. I can have healthy relationships. And um, yeah, when it's a doormat, you're not really serving the person, you know. <laughs> if you're saying, you know, as a doormat, you yeah. do it every time. That's when they break up with somebody, say, I do everything for you. you. Mm. Who do it happy? You? you can find a better woman than me? Yeah. Yeah, I said, Could. Who's on the doormat? Yeah. Who's a carpet? <laughs> <laughs> because men like that, like mats. <laughs> Something good by being a doormat. You mm-hmm. lie to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Yeah. It's 2021. People in the hospital coffin. <laughs> it's not a joke. But, but get, get real. Get real. Get Wake up. Real. Wake up. And take a good yawn and a good stretch. Wake up and see things for what they are. Raymond, say, question everything. Mm-hmm. Question everything. Yeah. Just don't sit down and, and people tell you what this life is hmm. and how this life's supposed to be. Wake up. Yeah. Ask yourself why you're here. You have a purpose. You have a legacy to build. Yeah. Get any business or doing that. It stinks. So New Year improved me. How you feel? Improving? I mean, the work is never done. No. The work is never done. New Year growing me. We'll figure some some <laughs> some new catchphrase. Because we can't, we can't we can't see Michelle Obama. We can't. No, we can't. We can't, we can't no, 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 no. Respect. We need to be um, um, innovative. So the question, Mark. Yeah. New Year. And I would I would never be perfect. Yeah, no. We would no. never be perfect. No, that doesn't exist. What about New Year? Healed me, but I still heal it. Yes, exactly. So we can't so be no ED know. words. You understand? I'll always be healing. Huh? I'll always be healing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, it's not a, it's not a it's 20, 21 thing. It's an ongoing thing. It's a process. I'm um, so new. Yeah. Awakened me. Well, I was awake last day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I said, when you were sleeping, you were sleeping. I say, I don't know. I mean, you guys down in the comments can let us know what could be the new catchphrase What's for, for, for new, year? new Year's. You yes, understand? Yes. Because the one we have right now, and now we're not at not That's in here tonight. tonight. Today, <laughs> noon time, midday, midnight, no time at 
all of them. Oh my gosh, this has been such a lively discussion. I always enjoy sitting and chatting with my girl, Rena. Yeah. Rena. Um, this was the first episode. The whole first episode. If you made it this far, thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> And of course, we want you guys to um, to have good fat and solid cause. Yes. You know, be be a boca. Be a boca. Hey. I mean, I hate to sound like a YouTuber, but like and subscribe and share with your friends. And comment what you're working on this year. Yes. So I feel in my healing. Mm -hmm. Taika, you continue in the legacy. Yes. That is Chaika. <laughs> Giselle <laughs> Philip Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I can't take it. I can't take I it. I want to know what all the book is up to. What are they doing? What are they doing? Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you guys in episode two. Bye bye. Whoop, whoop.